friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I just wanted to talk about chickens. And this is just generally speaking. But mostly because if you're not yet keeping chickens, but you live in a place where you can keep chickens, I really recommend you get on it as soon as you can because there are so many benefits to keeping chickens. And really, when it comes to any kind of uh, especially farm type animal they are the easiest ones at least that I know of they're the only kind that we've ever had we just don't have the space for goats or anything like that but most people can make room for chickens even if you live in a place where you might have the space but there are certain laws against it I still believe strongly in civil disobedience I don't believe that any government has a right to tell you you cannot keep chickens that's my personal opinion you obviously have to do what you think is best in that particular Particular situation but also as I've said before in other videos don't forget that if you live in such a place there is an option such as quail they take up less space and are very quiet and uh, relatively speaking they actually put out more eggs per pound than chickens do so that could be a very good option for you but I don't have any personal experience with quail, though I looked into it several years back before we got our chickens because I was thinking that might be a possibility. Maybe we'll do that instead. But really, I really wanted chickens, and I'm so glad that I have them. We've actually had our chickens now for, I, it, it's been over three years now, and I just don't, at this point, can't imagine not having them. So what I wanted to share with you today was to help encourage you to get into it is some of the benefits that I have found just having chickens that go beyond the fact that they produce eggs. So that's why we have our chickens, even though our buff Orpingtons, which is the ones we, we got first, they are supposed to be a dual purpose they're very meaty birds they're heavy a lot of people come over and see my chickens and go wow your chickens are so fat well they're just they're just a bigger breed and they get fluffier anyway than my black sex links do that's just the nature of them now first let me talk a little bit about when it comes to finding the breed that you may want for your area you want to look at your climate how hot does it get there or how cold you want a breed of chicken that can handle well the area that you live in if you live in an area that gets really really hot you may not want to get buff orpingtons you might want to get a chicken that doesn't get quite so fluffy and if you live in a really cold place you don't want to get a chicken that can't handle really low temperatures now we live in a very moderate climate so we could go uh, the whole gamut all the way across the board but what I have found with the buff Orpingtons is they don't mind the rain we that's our big thing we get 120 inches average annual rainfall and we can get up to 160 now if you want to know how that compares to where you live all you got to do is type in your location your city state and put in average annual rainfall so you can see the difference and it will give you a pretty good idea of what 120 inches means but anyway when you live in a place like that it is nice to have birds that don't mind the rain as much i i have certain ones of my buff orpingtons that'll just stay out and get just soaking wet and they don't seem to care and others will still run for cover the black sex links i find like it the least <laughs> even though i love the beauty of the black sex links i like the buff orpingtons better because they are just a more friendly bird the black sex links aren't mean they're just very skittish they don't let you come near them the way the buff orpingtons will so um, that's something you want to consider too. Do you have family? Do you have kids? Do you want your kids to be able to interact with the chickens? Look at your chickens that are going to be more friendly. And that's another thing too is some chickens can be very aggressive. You can actually go online and look up different chicken breeds. In fact, what I highly recommend if you're going to get chickens or even if you've already had them for many years, if you don't have Amy Fuel's Natural Chicken Keeping Handbook, I highly recommend it. I'll be linking to this in the the description box down below don't forget to click on either show more that you'll see right under my youtube channel name under the video here or the little gray arrow over here if you're on a smart device to open up the description box but anyway this is an excellent book and she does talk about different uh, varieties different breeds of chickens and gives the explanation of which you know temperament and all that kind of stuff so these are all things that are best to take into consideration when you're getting chickens. You also want to consider where you live. If you live in a neighborhood like we do, 
then you may not want to get roosters. You might just want to look at getting your chickens either from other people who raise chickens or like from us, we've been getting them from the local nursery, but I do know of some local people that do sell their, uh, their chicken eggs and so that's something you might want to just steer away from having roosters for that. Obviously, if you're wanting to have your uh, raise your own baby chicks from your own eggs, you do need a rooster for that. But some people will also basically rent out or let you borrow their roosters if you're trying to get fertilized eggs in order to do that. So yes, you have to have a rooster to fertilize the eggs in order to get baby chicks. That's very important. And the roosters do serve other purposes than that, especially if you live in a place with a lot of acreage and you let your chickens roam all over that area. It is very important then that you have at least one rooster or several if you have really big flocks of chickens because the roosters serve more purposes. They're very protective of the hens. They're always watching out for predators, hawks, and different things. They know how to communicate with the hens to get them to run for cover and find a good place to, to get safe. And so that's where, you know, roosters do more than just fertilizing eggs. So it's really important to have that. Here, it's not such a big deal because we have such a small little area and the chickens all have many places to stay safe to stay safe. We do have eagles and hawks that fly overhead, but they never come down into our small area because it's too, and with the grapevines and all the many things around here, it's just too enclosed of an area for me to have to worry about that. But we do get raccoons. So that's another thing is having, before you get your chickens, the most important thing you need to have established first is a good, solid, well-built chicken coop that will keep them safe from predators especially during the night that's where a lot of your predators are going to come out especially raccoons so when pat put our chicken built our chicken coop he put in a full foundation all concrete so there's no way the raccoons could dig underneath you also don't want to go with cheap siding because raccoons they're tenacious and i have a friend that actually had raccoons pulling the boards off the side of their chicken coop to get into the chickens. So they're, they are very intelligent, very tenacious. Uh, you really want to keep those chickens safe. So we do have some videos. I, he did a whole series of the chicken coop, but I also have one where I just took a lot of clips and sped it up so you can see a uh, see it in just a few minutes how Patrick built the coop but then there's also the broken down videos like how he built the door how he built the boxes the nesting boxes and all the different things so I will link to that whole playlist down below so that you can see how our chicken coop was built it's been really good we did have a raccoon trying to get in one night and it couldn't get in there and so uh, so far it's it's definitely served its purpose and we haven't lost a chicken yet in the three years let's pray that it stays that way but another thing I wanted to touch on before I talk more about the benefits of chickens and that is in the winter time your chickens will take on a little bit different look and so you don't want that to alarm you it is quite common during the winter that your chickens combs and wattles will shrink up a little bit and will also fade in color they won't be so red anymore when your chickens are not laying there it is just natural anyway for their combs and their wattles that's the part here to just become more pale and when they start laying again in the early early spring then you'll see them start turning red and when the deeper red they are and the bigger they get then you know that they're laying and that's also a good sign when they're young chickens that they're ready to start laying any time is when those when their combs and their wattles get real big and they start uh turning in a bright red now different chickens will have different size you know when you're talking hens they'll have different size combs and wattles depending on their breed. Some just naturally have very short combs or some have bigger combs. I have a couple of chickens that when they're in the middle of laying, their combs are really big in comparison to certain other ones. Like Dixie has a real short comb and it stays pretty short most of the time. It still shrinks up quite a bit in the winter, but not near as much as some of my other birds. Now I did do a video just on that and I do have a lot of side-by-side -side shots of my different Buff Orpingtons so that you can see what what they look like in the winter time as opposed to when they're laying and I will link to that video down below so you can check that out and, and get that good comparison now my black sex lengths are only just a little over a year old they actually laid all through the winter last year which was good it is normal for your chickens to slow down though or completely stop their egg production in winter 
first year with the Buff Warpingtons, they did keep laying, but they slowed down considerably. But the next two winters, they just stopped. And I'm expecting this winter to not get any eggs from them. It's possible my black sex links may still lay a little bit. Now there are tricks to get your chickens to keep laying through the winter, but I never do that, such as, you know, adding light to their coop all year round. I just think that God made the chickens to have some time off from laying eggs and that's the way it should be. So what I think is the better option is to find the different ways that you can preserve the eggs as they're coming in heavy to get you through the winter months. That's what I did that first year. I froze up a bunch of eggs and had more than enough to get us through that first winter that the that our buff Warpington slowed way down. Now in the spring of 2019, when I had lots of eggs coming in, I froze up a whole bunch. And I do have a video on how I do that. Keep in mind, I do, do lay those bags flat when they're freezing. So I'll link to that video down below. However, I do plan on doing something different and getting away from the bags. But uh, I don't have a video on that because I didn't bother freezing any this year since we never used any from last year because our black sex links, which we'd got early last year had started laying just before winter came in and just before the buff Orpingtons stopped laying and so just three eggs a day we were getting three eggs every day sometimes one or two in the winter from the black sex links but that was enough we don't eat that many eggs and that was enough for the two of us so uh, I didn't bother freezing up anymore now there are other methods you can do besides freezing and there's many channels out there that talk about using the water glass method and the using the lime and so look these up there's many ways that you can preserve eggs i just personally prefer to freeze them right now because i most of the time i'm using my eggs they're scrambled anyway so i just scramble them up and freeze them and that works really good for me whether i use them for a breakfast or i use them to add to baking for making pancakes making mayonnaise or anything else the frozen eggs work really good for me and then here's another little point on eggs that I wanted to bring up. I had recently watched a really wonderful interview that Ice Age Farmer did with Marjorie Wildcraft and I love her. I used to follow her years ago and then kind of fell off the radar there and forgot about her so it was great to listen to that interview but she was talking about how uh, a friend of hers that's just real big into chickens gave this statistic and I can see this being true. She said if one in every three families kept backyard chickens, there would be enough eggs in that one community to feed the whole community all the eggs they need. And I believe that because right now we only have 10, 10 chickens and we get more than enough eggs for us. And right now, you know, only maybe half of them are laying right now. And I still get enough eggs that I can share with my kids that we can use all we need and still have extra to share. Now, anytime my buff or pintons are going to come to a complete stop and not be laying at all. And maybe I'll just be down to maybe one, maybe this black sex link will stop too I don't know but even if they do I can fall back on the eggs I have in the freezer so but at this point I'm still occasionally selling some eggs to help pay for the feed and that works out great and uh, like I said sharing with my kids as well I just thought that was a really interesting point so if every, one in every three families kept some backyard chickens you wouldn't have to rely on the commercialized eggs that you buy from the store you could get them all locally so i that's another reason why i really want to highly encourage people if they are able to do it get some chickens even if it's only two or three because chickens need other chickens and you know they're especially like buff or paintings they're definitely more of a social bird and so i i actually say get at least three i don't even think two would be good enough i personally want more <laughs> we started off with seven we have ten i'd love to have at least a dozen chickens at all times myself and you gotta keep in mind they're gonna they get old they're gonna stop laying and they're gonna die and they're gonna need to be replenished so having a source whether it be you do it yourself or you can get them from friends or a local nursery to get more baby chicks maybe once every other year or every year that is a really good idea to keep your chickens going through to keep your egg product 
production up as well. And then yes, you can, if you can handle it, you can process your older birds uh, and uh, use them for meat. That's one of the reasons why we did the buff Orpingtons. We have yet to slaughter any of them. We do have a couple we should probably take out this year. I'm really not looking forward to it, but their meat is gonna be a lot more tough than your younger birds, but it can still be used in a stew or something that you can cook for a long period of time or pressure canned. That's another thing that you can do. And one more thing I wanted to mention about Amy's book, and I have a video on this too, is last year I had one of my chickens get very, very ill. In fact, I was sure I was gonna come out and find her dead one morning. And I turned, thankfully already had Amy's book on hand. I turned to her book and it was definitely a lifesaver. Now I couldn't do everything she she said in there to help my sick bird because I didn't have all those herbs on hand. I am growing chicory now for that purpose. And here's a picture that I just took this morning because this morning is the date that I'm shooting this, whatever date it is, uh, September 9th maybe. <laughs> I don't even know what date it is. Uh, my chicory finally is blooming. But uh, anyway, uh, that's a really good herb to grow if you have chickens, but also oregano, garlic, any of this stuff. So anyway, I will link to the video I did and the methods I used based off of what she had in her book to help my, re my sick chicken. So that will be down in the description box below as well. And I was amazed how in within a day I, she started getting better and then with a few days she was almost completely back to normal by doing what I did there. So now let's move on to talk about some other benefits of chickens besides just the egg production obviously or even meat production if that's what you have them for. Now our chickens since they're backyard chickens they're allowed uh, during most of the year especially in the winter to roam pretty much wherever they want to as long as they're staying away from the street so they they actually have an area in the front yard that we keep fenced in that they can roam around in and it's my garden area this time of the year but they can get in there and scratch around and poop and so they're fertilizing my garden they're scratching up weeds and different and tilling things up and they really have been the number one thing to help keep our slug population down because where we live we have major amounts of slugs more slugs than most people will have because we do live in a very wet area and please understand the beer method and many of the other natural methods people like to talk about do not work here in fact I did a video on slug and snail control that I will also link down below for us personally the number one thing has been chickens yes I know ducks are also a great option we just have no space or desire to own ducks here where we're at so anyway the chickens uh, you can train your chickens to like slugs they especially like the eggs and the little bait little tiny slugs when they're this big but simply start feeding them slugs even cut up slugs when they're little and they'll get a taste for the slugs and then they will they will keep your garden pretty well cleaned out of slugs so as long as I let them roam out here in the main backyard garden front yard garden for as long as I can during the year until I start planting things they really have done a great job at keeping our slugs population down so that's one major benefit and certain other pests as well and, and they all eat snails as well and then of course like I said they're fertilizing they're tilling they're just really a blessing for your garden and even if you don't let them free range in your garden areas during the winter then you can still shovel out their coop and take all that goodness and throw it into your garden in the winter and that that will get a good fertilizer and it will sit down there and it will sit through the winter and compost so it's not too hot for the things that can't handle chicken manure when it's fresh it is a hot fertilizer so you don't want to put it directly on tomatoes or anything like that because it will burn them so that's something you want to really Really break down now corn loves doesn't mind fresh manure neither do more a lot of your berries like the grapevines back here and the blueberries you can barely see anymore because my grape my grapevines are massive right now they're in fact you can hardly walk through the down the steps to get down there but the grapes also love that chicken manure so and potatoes are another one so anything that loves a lot of uh, that loves acidic soil those are the things you want to uh, put your manure on your chicken manure on in particular obviously horse manure anything with hair those are good for your things that like a sweeter soil and then another benefit to chickens that I have found is they just bring me joy when I'm having an especially stressful moment or I'm 
just dealing with yet another person that feels the need to tear me to shreds and I just I just need to get away from it for a minute I'll just come out here and hang out with my chickens I'll pick up little Miss Claire because she's my sweetest her and Broomhilda now she used to be my mean one she used to bite me but those are my two sweetest birds Claire's the only one that really doesn't mind she likes me to hold her where the other birds they they don't mind me petting them they don't really like to be held but just hanging out with them and they gather around me and they make their soft little noises it's a it's very calming and soothing to my nerves and it just it brings me peace and happiness when i do that just like walking around my garden and watching the things grow is another thing that bring that can really be a good de-stressor i find my chickens do that too even when the chickens are being naughty which is funny because i'm out here shooting this long video and here's the time i would love it if they were making all kinds of noise so you can hear them instead of interrupting me in my other videos now they're quiet though because we're kind of right at the hottest point of the day and so they're all relaxing in the shade but but anyway, even when they're being naughty and fighting each other and chasing the dog, they chase the dog, they make me laugh. And that's also very de-stressing. So that may sound silly. I just think that's a really wonderful benefit. And now more than ever, we need these different outlets to help bring us that uh, that little bit of humor and to, and to just get away from the, just the, the negativity that's out there right now. But it is important to take those times just to take a break away from all that. And hanging out with my chickens is one of those things I do. And of course the dog too, obviously the dog. You know, having pets of any kind can be very de-stressing. And of course, as I keep saying in a lot of my more recent videos, with what we see coming with our food supply, which, you know, I believe there is a lot of truth in this because when you start putting pieces together and see all the many different things that's happening to the, the general food supply, I think it's more important now than ever to find as many different ways as possible that you can get yourself self-sufficient efficient, whether it be getting chickens that will produce eggs and or meat for you, or even rabbits or quail. These are just some of the ways that you can get yourself in a better position. And for me, the chickens was the best choice that I made. We went back and forth with a few different things, and I am so glad that we went this route. And uh, like I said, I can't imagine life without having chickens. I just love them so much. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it encouraging, and that if you don't have chickens, look at getting some if you're able and if you do again don't forget Amy Fuel's book I if you don't have it yet you really got to have it in your library it's an excellent book Amy is a wonderful person and she does also have a really great uh, homesteaders herbal companion book which I will also link down below another one I highly recommend for your library oh and before I go please share with me your chicken stories down below we would love to hear your funny uplifting chicken stories and how what benefits they have brought to you all right well thanks for watching take care and god bless